Hi, I'm Dr. Nam Simalero. I'm your coach and you're watching the show It Can Get Better, Leaders and Mentors for a Business and Private Life Worth Living. Today I have the honor of having with me somebody that has inspired me personally very much, not just on the business level, not just on the career level, not just on the mother level, but also in the general sense that, you know, how do you do everything as a woman? So this big inspiration for me is Dr. Sabine Wunschmann and we're a German doctor and a Greek coach. We're located in Greece, but it's not just about Greeks because Dr. Wunschmann is all over the world right now. So Sabine, so nice to have you here. Thank you so much. I know you're busy, 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 and you're making it all happen. How do you do that? We, we, I'm very busy, obviously, like most of us, but you know, you need to set priorities and you need to make, you know, things happen that are important and that, you know, make you move on. So I'm very happy to be here. I think it's really exciting. I really like what you're doing. And I think it's, uh, it's what Dalai Lama said, you know, that the Western world will be healed by the Western women. And I think it's about empowerment and giving on knowledge, sharing, sharing, big thing. And uh, I'm really excited to talk to you. That's, that's fantastic. So let me go right in because your big, big priority, I know, is your kids, right? And I know you have four kids and mm -hmm. I have all these younger people right now. Uh, you know, I go in, in companies and I do trainings or coaching people and, and I hear these young girls of 28 or 30 and they're like, oh, you know, Nancy, I really want to do this career thing, but I also want to have a baby. How is that possible? So you having four and, and you being a doctor and uh, you're an OB uh, and your kids are now how old? My kids, uh, I don't have kids, I have boys. Exactly, they're not kids so, anymore. So I have, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, boys have, or Sabine, have, I'm sorry. I have four, four, <laughs> four boys, which, uh, men. Which, which are some of them already men. Um, and I, I agree with you. I also encounter this a lot that people say, you know, how can you do it? And uh, the truth is, is if you love what you're doing and you yeah. really put your passion into it and you set priorities, it's very possible and you can, you can be blooming and blossoming. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, something that is absolutely possible. In my office, I also see women that they're really hesitant of if they yeah. should have the baby or not because, you know, it's too much. And from my perspective, um, it's, it's very possible and it can, can get better, you know, as your program says. And it's something that uh, you just need to organize yourself very well. I mean, there's obviously not much time for you know, going out or, you know, mm -hmm. hairdressers and these kind of things, but, yeah, you know, it's... Well, we had one today. Yeah. Not. <laughs> now, I understand that. And, and then it's not just the kids or boys or... Because now it's... Does it get easier, by the way? Like, as they get older, does it get easier? I think, actually, it gets easier the more kids you have, funny mm -hmm. enough. I remember when I was pregnant with the fourth one, I thought I'm going to jump out of the window because I didn't know how yeah. I would tackle it. But it actually gets so much easier the more they are because they get True. entertained with each other. I think if you have one kid, uh, you need to yeah. be more more entertaining, you more know, involved and in more involved. Things, so yeah. they the boys are really more interested where their brothers are than where I am at this stage now. So it's really good. It's it's That's it's great. very good. Yeah, That's I mean great. they it it gets easier. I think it gets easier. Plus you become also so much more. Yeah. True. experience so things that you would think were like a big challenge or a big mountain yeah. they really you know they become easy do you think you'll be like you know what the greek moms <laughs> i know you're german so the greek mother thing is not your thing but i'm greek so i'm like i don't i really don't want to become the greek mother that says did you have your lunch uh did you have your did, i don't know did you take your food with you you got gonna catch a cold do you do these things no, no, okay. no. I that was definite. No, 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 no. I remember when you know when they were uh, signed up for their tennis lessons or their football when they were younger. You know, and then my husband or my mother-in-law would say, "Ah, it's raining. They shouldn't go." <laughs> I says, yes. "What? <laughs> of course they go. They only You're not, German. They're not only going <laughs> when they're sick, but anything else they go." And that is actually, you know, my 18-year-old. He he turned very recently 18, and he's ready to open his wings and fly out of the nest, which is emotionally. So 
I feel like a Greek mother there. I have, mm -hmm. I have a lot of respect for Greek mothers. I think they're very nurturing and very beautiful mothers, but maybe they're too overprotective. I think yeah, we are. The line, the fine line is somewhere in the middle. So, so this 18 year old said to me, mommy, you were sometimes really tough to me and I didn't like you for that. But now that I look back, I thank you for that. Oh, so, it must have been such yeah, a nice moment. Yeah. It's like, yes, I did it right. Yes, and, and you know, they become more independent mm -hmm. if you really sometimes push them and mm -hmm. push them maybe over their limits, but they, they then feel that they can do it. So if you yeah, constantly, that's... you know, don't do this, don't do that, it's cold, you might fall. You know, if you fall, you fall and you learn from it and you will not fall the next time. Oh, that's true. But yeah. I had a lot of uh, conflicts there with my mother-in-law. I mean, she was of thinking course. that I was very tough and very, you know, too, too rough and now she adores the grandsons but it's a cultural thing I it think. is it, it is and we're changing as a nation I think I we're think changing so, yeah so this is this is good now um, so you had your career I know you met your husband you were studying you were in London right yeah I think I'm probably one of the very few foreigners in in Greece that I didn't meet my husband on the beach well, I hope he looked good on the beach. <laughs> so we were working together in the same hospital and uh, I was actually just, the plan was for me to be a, a year in England, learn mm -hmm. a certain technique and go back to Germany. Okay. Here I meet the Greek guy and ah, 22 years later I'm still in Greece. Well, that's, that's but good. I, I never regretted it. I think it's a beautiful it country and it a is. wonderful place to raise children also. And, and then you have this, and then you met uh, your husband, you came here, you had four kids, and you had, I mean, you, I know that you have a challenge and you're very open about talking because, uh, talking about it, because one of your kids has, um, uh, is, is very severely handicapped. Yeah. Um, and um, he can't do anything by himself, right? So no, he's, he's, a, he's, he's very severely handicapped, and that is obviously also was a big challenge in a yeah. society in Greece, you know, where things are supposed to be perfect. So, but I, I feel that this uh, boy, he was also our first one, has actually made us better people. You know, we have become mm. so much more um, empathic and, you know, we've learned so much through yeah. him that has changed all of our lives. So my husband, mine, our children, you know, it's definitely you are a very special person if you look after a very handicapped yeah. person. So, yeah, but you know, I came to Greece thinking I would come for my love because I fell in love with that Greek. So I really kind of thought, you know, my career, I need to put it on, a, on hold and just follow my heart. So I didn't really think oh. I would have a great career here. So You didn't think you were going to like have an office and no, have a practice No, because I, I, didn't spe I didn't speak Greek. Mm -hmm. I went to the supermarket and I bought, you know, to uh, cloth whitener instead of toothpaste because I couldn't <laughs> yeah. read it. And, um, and I started learning Greek immediately. And in this la language lesson that I was uh, fortunate to go, it was full of foreigners, mm -hmm. that they were so excited that there was a foreign gynecologist. And within a month, I started working. But the plan was actually wow. just to go for the heart. As you say, it can get better. You know, I really, I didn't really plan on that, but I started an amazing career. Mm -hmm. Had the children at the same time, but being very organized. It kind of, you know, worked out very well. I think it's also, you know, good for the children. You know, when sometimes you get this crisis that you think, oh my God, I'm not a good mother and maybe I'm not I was just about seeing to them you. enough yes. and all of that. So I did a little auditing with them and questioning. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, what do you think, Victor? Do you think I'm enough at home? You see enough of me? And they look at me and says, mommy, of course, <laughs> you're a doctor. How old so, were they when you did the audit? I love that audit. Yeah, because, perfect. You know, it's kind of you know because you have all this multitasking that you have to juggle in your life, of and course. you sometimes feel, you know, that you're not doing spending enough time with them. Mm -hmm. But I think it's not the amount of hours that you spend no. with them; it's the quality, it's the quality yes. that you spend with them. And I think it's also very important for them, for the children. It's my experience to see that their parents or their mom has her own life. So it's not only role model. 
Yeah, so I mean, it's not only, you know, the, the, the mother that is cooking, which is also a wonderful job also to be a mom at home, you know, I think it's right. a... Whatever pleases very everybody. Very important job also. Yes. But, you know, if your child knows that all your happiness really depends on being a mom, I think it makes them more sort of emotionally blackmailed if they want to do their own thing. Yeah, I think it's a heavy burden to put on a kid. And I hear that a lot. It's like, I left my career for you. And then, you know, it's not a very good thing. But it is great. I think, I think that um, people that choose to stay at home, if they do it with their hearts and they're very fulfilled oh, yeah. and they love it, that's fantastic. I'm not that person. So I relate me, a lot with, yeah, I relate a lot with what you're saying. Um, now, in all these years, what can you recall as um, a big, bad, wolf, you know, like something that went terribly wrong, but you recovered from it. You mean as a mother or as a... It doesn't matter. You know, we all have some failures or things that we feel like they were failures or black days or black holes. I know mine was uh, when I, I got, um, you know, I went to the hospital because I was clinically burned out. And that was a very dark, very deep well that I fell in and I managed to get out and it was fantastic but um, that was my dark thing um, and I think everybody has. I mean you know I think there are there the in life from what I experience mm -hmm. is that actually the difficulties and the dark uh, experiences that they actually make you grow and make mm -hmm. you stronger so for me obviously the darkest moment was you know when my twins were born and the girl died and Spiros, who's the boy that has the handicap, survived. Yeah. And, you know, I, I really felt I would never recover from that. You know, yeah. it was such a loss to go to the funeral of your own child. Oh God, yeah. And I also wanted her to be buried and, and still, you know, being the bottom of the bottom, rock bottom, you, you can trust life and you can trust mm -hmm. the universe and time and you know then if you if you actually take life's lessons as gifts and you know as stepping stones to grow mm -hmm. and uh, you know other things is when you know a child falls or has an accident and you're in the office and you know sitting at the playground mm -hmm. like other moms being there right away but you have to brush there i mean these are the moments yes. where you really feel you know oh my god what what am i doing you know i'm serving mm -hmm. everybody else but i'm not there when something happens in my child's life, like an accident, I mean, thankfully Thank it God, hasn't yeah. happened that much. But well, you picked up your Greek knocking on wood. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I spit. I knock on wood. <laughs> <and> <laughs> that's fantastic. I'm no, more, this is more great. Greek than German, actually. But, no, this is great. Uh, you said something about you know being. You actually said it twice about being very organized. Is there a specific routine that you follow? Some things that you do that might be good tips for the rest of us to get more organized. I think the, the columns in life that keep you well and help you age healthily, it's not so much, you know, if you have wrinkles or if you are, but it's really is to eat well, to exercise, to sleep well and, you know, to, to grow spiritually. So mm -hmm. these are things that I, I really make sure that they're on my priority list and I really, okay. I mean, three, four times in the week at 7.15 I'm doing my exercises. That's so, amazing. So, so, and that is a little routine that has worked mm -hmm. very much for me. So I can actually get it in. I feel good. So by the time I leave, uh, you know, the, the place 8.30, I'm done with my exercises. That's so I, do, I don't really have this coming back home coming at back, night and yes. don't have the courage. But I, what, what I always say also to my patients, you know, you need to want to make space for it. You can, all, you can always say, you know, oh, then I don't have time. Oh, I don't believe in uh, I don't believe in time. I believe that you have time for everything that you really want to have yeah, in your program. Absolutely. You want to have four kids. You're gonna have time for all four of them. You want to exercise. You want to travel. I see that every day. If you really, really want it and it means something to you, absolutely. Somehow you yeah. find the time. But the things you're not very sure about, like me and exercising, you know, I know I should, but I'm not like I want to. So I don't really want to, so I don't really have time for it. But I do have time for a lot of other things that I love. So. 
Yeah, but I mean, you know, the, we, ha we have achieved such an amazing gift as, as humankind, yes. which is longevity. Yes. You yeah. know, we live so much longer than we actually designed for. And, you know, in order to keep the vessel that we're using in this life well, you sure. need to treat it well. No, it, and it doesn't I am, come... I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm just saying that sometimes you see, your logic sees the obvious benefit, but your heart is not there yet. Mm. So I think this is the connection that we need to make and it's a lot of, about seeing the emotional benefit rather than the physical benefit like oh I would look better in a size less size pants that's yeah, not it no. it's about being able to live better not even live longer but just live better and enjoy everything yeah graceful yes. you know to be to yes. be graceful yes. to have the energy to do things exactly. and not to exactly. and you know this thing with the burnout and so many mm -hmm women that I see that they're so exhausted yes. and they cannot manage, I think you need to put yourself also priority, you know, one, agree. one hour per day, you do something for yourself. I agree, this is one of my main things, you know, I work with burnout as well, like prevention, ideally prevention of burnout, and this is a big debate, people are used to taking care of everybody else and, and yourself, especially women. Yeah, especially women, yourself comes down to the tenth line of the things priority, that you have to yeah. do. And 10th is not a priority anymore, you know, mm. so the, you toss it out very easy and then the day next comes and then the day after and the day after and you haven't done anything about yourself. Now, I will go to your practice thing because there's one thing that fascinates me. I had a baby, I, saw, I work with doctors a lot. So I've seen a lot of uh, people in your profession and they grow old doing what they do, which is great because, you know, it keeps some... It gives them some confidence and it gives the patients some confidence. Oh, huge experience. Exactly. No, no. It, it makes me feel very comfortable when I see a person that is not 20 years old. I wouldn't go to have, uh, you know, to give birth with a 10, 20, 23 year old doctor probably. Maybe they were amazing, but no. so, however, I always wonder, these people, are they okay to be doing the same thing forever? And it's always... I admire it for people that do it and it shocks me at the same time. What I found so fascinating was when I found out that you're building this amazing online program, the Hormone Harmony, to be able to work in a different level with other people and I know you have patients from all over the world, from Australia, yeah. from um, Europe, from Canada. Canada, yeah and I thought that was fantastic and tell me a bit more about what this Hormone Harmony, how, how does it work? For me, you know, being an OBGYN for 25 plus years, you know, giving away the age, um, <laughs> I, I, I realized, <laughs> I realized that, you know, to many women, I'm saying the same things again and again. Mm -hmm. So we are all kind of stuck in the same, you know, corners and the same cul-de-sacs and cannot get out of there. So for me, it's very important that every 10 years I do mm -hmm. something new. I add awesome. something else. So I did amazing training with Vithulkas, who's an amazing Greek guy, who's the god of homeopathy. I know. So I, I had the, yes. the honor to train with him. You know, I really advanced in, in vaginal rejuvenation and, you know, all these issues that women are really, you know, struggling with and nobody talks about them. Mm -hmm. And so I felt, you know, for a couple of years now, the, the, the wish that I would like to package my knowledge and put it out there, you know, so that it gets mm -hmm. out of this little office, but I can actually give it to women no matter where we are. And because time is of such an essence today, mm -hmm. a lot of people, they cannot make the appointment. They don't have the time to come and visit because... And that really challenged me to try and do and package my knowledge online because I, I feel that, you know, when you have the experience and you are, um, you know, you, you could pass on a lot of wisdom yes. and, and little tricks and secrets, which is nothing magic, but it just comes with experience. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I have put them on this drsabine.com, you know, plateau or platform. And there are certain things that you can work with me. If you are in Hawaii or in Australia or in America or here. And this is something that I started, you know, out of the wish to give, you know, mm -hmm. to share my knowledge and to 
educate women because I feel very yeah. often that women don't know not you know not because they're stupid but they don't have access mm -hmm. to the right information that is also filtered by a doctor because there's a yes. lot of information okay. out there and a lot of them you know are really not filtered and not correct and not good but so I, I felt you know I give my knowledge mm -hmm. on to women that can be anywhere and at the same time, also the opportunity for me that I can do that being anywhere. That's so, fantastic. So getting out of yes. this retro. I know, and then you have the, the other one coming. Uh, no, it's already out, the hormone uh, harmony booster, right? Yeah. And that's even less needy of you talking to a patient, right? Mm. That's awesome. And, and the patient can, you know, listen to it again. Mm -hmm. You know, now I have a couple of hours. Let me review. Let me have a look at it again. So I basically want to empower women to become the master yes. chefs of their hormonal health. That's fantastic. This is my, my goal. And I think most of the women mm -hmm. from an early age, doesn't mean that this only applies in menopause, but, you know, from the 30s, from childbirth, from the 40s, from the mm -hmm. premenopause, postmenopause, menopause, we all struggling with similar problems. Yes. And, and then there needs to be a solution. The solution cannot be a hysterectomy or just synthetic tablets or antidepressants because that's what's usually offered. And I think what is so revolutionary about what you're proposing here is that we as women can talk on a different level with everybody because you, you know how it goes, you are at a, any job yeah. and your nerves are off and everyone's like, oh yeah, okay, she's, she's going, yeah, she has a period, oh, she, she's going into menopause and that's like shameful. You have to feel a little less just because mm. you're going through that and it cannot be like that. It should not be like that. So if you give me the knowledge and I don't actually have to spend hours in your office, hours in exams, hours in this, hours yeah. in that, but I can just get more educated. Like people got educated about healthy and health issues and, and uh, hygiene issues. Mm. We actually got educated over the years. Uh, now it looks normal that we all know that we should brush our teeth. Yeah. Right. So it's for me, it's this thing that if you make it so common in a way that people actually women know what's going on in their bodies and there are some tricks. And of course, you need the doctor at one point. Of course, you yes. do need the doctor. Know, of course. No, of course. But, uh, you know, instead of just going in the Internet and seeing anybody who has an opinion about everything mm. that is definitely not filtered, this is so much better. And the feedback, you know, because we women, we always have this little voice in the yeah. back of our heart, of our head, which basically tells us, you know, who's going to listen to you mm -hmm. and, you know, what is this going to be, you know, successful. So there all this self-criticism mm -hmm. that really puts you down. So I started this against all odds. The feedback of the women is amazing. That's fantastic. Everybody says, you know, thank you. I really feel that somebody's listening to me. I can hear finally. What I've been feeling, you know, is not because I'm crazy, but because there are things going on. Oh my God, that's and it's fantastic. been viral, really. It's really that's awesome. Mm. This is so good. And I'm 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 very very happy that you know my wish to give, and to empower has been you know, has been stepped up on a different scale and on a different level, no, and it's, it's not in this office anymore. And I think it's this fantastic. is it's like freedom for me and freedom yes. for anybody because yes. you can do it at your own convenience and time and ease so so that's fantastic i actually wish you the best with that i wish that everybody gets it and i wish that a, a lot of money comes your way with this because sometimes people think oh yeah you know doctors they're all about money and i think yes why not you're giving so much you are at this high, high level of education and experience and everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that is only fair that you also think about the tangible things. I don't, I don't think that we should not look at it like that because I think part of this is your entrepreneurial spirit. And I know that you do have one and that's a big taboo. When you talk to a doctor, they can only be doctors or entrepreneurs. And I think you can do both and do it in the same uh, respectful way. Manner, yeah. I, I think, you know, my philosophy has always been that, you know, if, you, if you're good at something mm -hmm. and you really do it genuinely, wholeheartedly, money will be a side effect that comes. So, and and the, the philosophy, of course, we should make money. We should make all money, you know, selling shoes, 
selling newspapers, coaching, whatever. But you know, the incentive is really to empower mm -hmm. women, and I know. and and the you know, m if money is a side effect, that will be wonderful mm -hmm. because it will buy me freedom. Um, but uh, I, I think I think that's what we should all have inside us, and I think. That's what also your goal is. It mm -hmm. can get better. We all have it inside us, yes. one way or the other. Totally. And you should just follow your instincts and go mm -hmm. for it. Don't mm -hmm. doubt yourself. And I, I agree, but it's not just that, because I know that for you it's, not, it's never just about, well, except your husband, but it's never just about, okay, I'll follow my heart. I know that you put a lot of hard work behind it. Yeah, I, I know that you put a lot of resources. I know that you invest time and money and, money, yeah. and energy and um, time away from the things, the other things that you want to do. So I like to, you know, underline that because sometimes people say, yeah, okay, Sabine or whoever, yeah, she was already known. And it doesn't work like that mm -hmm. because you, are, you have an extremely big brand here in Greece. But I know that when you started, you didn't have an international brand. No. Not so all, no. having it now, I think it's awesome because also you started being in Greece. It doesn't matter if you're German or Greek or whatever. You started from this little place mm. out here in the world and you have reached women globally. And I think that's so fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes I have to really pinch myself yeah. and really, you know, think that this is really what's happening. But it is and it's really... It is really wonderful. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy it very much. I'm very happy and I'm also proud of myself, I must say, which yes. is something that we yes. should also be proud of ourselves. Of Go course. out there, do things and, and, you know, be happy about it and proud. You know, I'll be back because you said 10 years. I'll be back in 10 years <laughs> <laughs> and I'll ask you, What's new? And you better have something to tell me. If I'm I know sure you, I have. yes. If I know you, you. I think in five years you already have something new. Um, let me close by just um, asking you to tell me what you think with a few words. I'm just gonna pop some words, and you just tell me the first thing that comes in your head. First word is empathy. Empathy is something that is a tool every day in my job because I'm dealing with so many wonderful patients that uh, we have to break good news and bad news and mm -hmm. we really need to slip into the skin of other people to understand what's going on. So mm -hmm. empathy is a big, big, big tool mm -hmm. that also takes a lot of energy from mm -hmm. yourself. So mm -hmm. empathy is a big one. Mm -hmm. And I wish for everybody to be able to have empathy because I think it makes yes. life so much more colorful. Oh, yes. Not easier, but colorful. So my second word for you is self-leadership. It's a beautiful path that you can really engage with yourself, that you, that you really inspire other people, mm -hmm. that you become you know, a good example, a role model, mm -hmm. and, you know, and you, you can make the place, uh, the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. self-leadership for me means that you really you know, share your knowledge and mm -hmm. you become leading in your, in your field in a sensible way. Fantastic. And my last one is vision. I mean, I'm greatly impressed by the by the little Swedish girl, you know, that she made this impact in in the world with her climate change awareness campaign. And I think my vision mm -hmm. for this world would be that we all try to make the place, the world a better place in our small little units and mm -hmm. be more aware of what we can do to help Mother Earth to stay a good planet for the long for the long run because the only place we have and you know I think my vision would be that we should all create a, mm -hmm. you know more awareness for that. Awesome Sabine it's been fantastic I bet you'll be back in five years or less <laughs> thank you so much I wish my you all pleasure. the best. Thank you very much. And you actually are so inspiring to me. I hope everybody else gets inspired. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am Dr. Nancy Maleru, and please remember, you have the right to want it all, and we're here to help you get it and enjoy it. If you like this video, please do share it. Have other people enjoy the benefits of talking to people like Dr. Sabine Wunschman, and don't forget to subscribe. I personally read all your comments, and I'm very happy to include your ideas or answer your questions personally. You're not alone and it can get better.